In this video, we're going to talk about static electricity. So we're going to go over insulators and conductors, the different methods of charging by friction, induction and contact, detecting charge and discharging. So we'll start by looking at insulators and conductors. The definition for insulators is a material that doesn't allow charge to move freely, for example plastics, whereas conductors allow charge to move freely, for example metals. So as a kid, I'm sure you would have been told not to put forks in the electrical wall socket. But have you ever thought why you can safely put in a phone charger or any plug with a plastic around it? So if we think about it, a fork is metal. So if we plug that into the wall socket, there's going to be a direct path from the electricity in the wall up into our hand. So we're going to get electrocuted, whereas the adapter for the wall has a plastic coating. So although it does have the metal spikes that go into the wall, we are holding the plastic, and the plastic's an insulator which doesn't allow the charge to move up into our hand, and therefore we don't get electrocuted. Now we're going to talk about charging by friction. So this is when electrons rub off, making the object more positive than the rubber, or the thing that's causing the friction more negative. So you can see here, we've got a pipe that is neutral. It's got the same amount of positive charges as it has negative charges. And this is our rubber here. And you can see that it's rubbing the pipe, so much so that the electrons come off. Now that the glove is negative and the pipe is positive, if we move the glove away, the pipe will be attracted to it. This is due to the charge separation. So we know the opposite charges attract, so because the charges have been separated, there will be some form of attraction. An important part for this is to note that the object and the rubber must be insulators. Now we'll look at charging by induction. So this occurs when charge is transferred from one object to another and then the objects are separated. So as you can see here on the left, globe A has 12 positive charges, whereas globe B has zero positive charges. Now if we bring them in contact with each other, the charge is shared between A and B. So each globe has six positive charges. Now if we separate globe A and globe B, we're left with two positive globes. Whereas if we look at the start, we had one positive and one neutral, and now we have two positives. Another way to charge an object is by contact. So if we use our negatively charged glove, and we touch a rod, which is earthed, so connected to the ground, we can see what will happen. So we can expect that the charge is going to be transferred via physical touch. So you can see as the glove comes in, the electrons are repelled because they're like charges, and they move through the earthing system into the earth. So now the rod is positively charged. As you'll note here, only electrons can be displaced. That's because if we think back to our atomic structure, we know electrons are in the valence or the outer energy shells, whereas protons, the positive charges, are locked up in the nucleus of the atom. So therefore, only our electrons are able to be rubbed off. Now we're going to talk about detecting charge. If an object is charged, it must repel another object with the same charge. This is because charged objects will attract small uncharged objects. So you can see here our charged object is our glove and our small uncharged object is our rod. We know it's uncharged because it's got the same amount of positives as negatives. But you can see when the negative glove is brought in, the positives and the rod are all attracted to that side and the electrons are all repelled. This is what we call a polarized object. So polarized seems like a big word, but all it means is that there's charge separation within one object. So as you can see here, the left hand side of the rod is negative, whereas the right hand side of the rod is positive. So in conclusion, we can say this is an uncharged rod, but it is still attracted to the glove due to the polarizing effect. As you can see here, now the rod is negatively charged. So we can say this is a charged rod, which will be repelled as it is the same charge as the glove. So when the glove's brought closer, the rod's gonna be repelled. Lastly, we'll look at discharging. So this is the movement of charge from one place to another to remove charge separation. This is also called earthing. It's called earthing because the earth has an abundance of electrons. So if we think about lightning, we know that the storm cloud is negative. So you can see up in the blue cloud, there's lots of negative electrons. This causes the ground to be polarized. So all of the protons in the ground are attracted up to the top. Electrons are attracted to the ground because they're opposite charges and they jump across and this is what we see as lightning. So if we look a bit closer, we can see in the highlighted yellow box, the charge distribution is a lot higher. 
So because it's a pointy object, and because it's really high up, it's full of the positive protons. So because it's got all of the positive charge, the negative electrons in the storm cloud are more likely to jump onto that rod. This is what we call a lightning rod, and most really high buildings like the Sky Tower have a lightning rod. So lightning will flow down into the rod and through the building through an earthing strip. So there'll be a big rod that goes from the top of the building all the way into the ground, which disperses the electrons where lightning strikes. So from this video, these are the skills you need to know. We've talked about insulators and conductors, charging by friction, induction and contact, detecting this charge, and then finally discharging. So we've talked about the materials of insulators and conductors, the processes involved with charging objects, detection, and earthing. There's often a lot of questions about charging objects and earthing, or discharging, so it's really important to go over this in depth and make sure you fully understand it all.